good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever location you are watching this video from whichever location you are seeing this video i am so excited that from 30th of april from 30th of april that is saturday and sunday so every saturday and sunday for the coming two to three months we'll be doing the design pattern training so on saturday 9 pm to 10 pm and on sunday 9 pm to 10 pm we'll be doing the design pattern training if you go to questpond.com if you go to live training out here you will see the complete syllabus we have hosted out here right now before you come to this training if you come prepared you can learn better right so what i would suggest if you have the questpond membership you know so you can go and you can search design pattern and in design pattern you will find that we have this course out here which is uh, learn design pattern in eight hours and it is with a project you know so basically here i've explained those design pattern which you will use in your project very very regularly right and also later on i have gone through individual design patterns as well so if you go down below you will find the individual design patterns as well right so if you come prepared you know you can ask me good questions you can understand better you can ask me advanced questions and that would improve uh, your knowledge more rigorously right uh, now i want to stress a very important point here today that how to learn design pattern how do developers learn design pattern what are the pitfalls uh, of the way developers learn design pattern and what is the best way to learn design pattern so this is the way most of the developers learn so for example let us say a developer wants to learn a composite pattern or let us say he wants to learn bridge pattern so, okay let us take an example of a bridge pattern so what he will do he will google online he will google bridge pattern in c sharp or bridge pattern in java whatever right and let us say that he comes to this wikipedia page out here and then he sees bridge pattern and in bridge pattern he sees the golf definition or the definition of whatever design pattern we are we are reading right so it says here in bridge pattern decouple an abstraction from its implementation allowing the two to vary independently let me repeat this sentence decouple an abstraction from its implementation allowing the two to vary independently and then he says okay <laughs> half of the people won't understand this definition specifically if english is his second language for example when you talk about india nepal bangladesh sri lanka pakistan here you know in asian countries you will find that a lot of people's english is the second language so for them like you know understanding these words like abstraction and implementation sometimes it becomes difficult right so then he goes and he uh, goes to the bridge pattern link out here and then he tries to see some source code so um, when he goes and sees the source code then he sees something like this he says okay there is i bridge and then he implements a class bridge one mm -hmm. and then he sees there is a I abstract bridge and something something right so this again does not go into his head because this is not uh, associated with a real world example it is not explained properly right and uh, some of the websites actually show these kind of class diagrams you know which again becomes very difficult to understand right so when you talk about you know developers learning design pattern right you know they go through such kind of a route you know they google they come across class diagrams you know which they cannot connect to they come across you know such kind of code you know which they cannot connect to right and it becomes difficult to learn design pattern so here is my thought you know if you want to learn design pattern it should be natural it should not be superficial it should not be like you are trying to read this definition and then you are trying to mug up or you are trying to go through you know some of these class diagrams and you're trying to understand it right it should be very natural because what is design pattern design pattern is time tested solutions so for example now let us say that if you have a fever right then you will say okay go and drink ginger tea right so that's a homemade solution there's a homemade time tested solution now it comes out naturally you have not you have not tried to sit and think about that you you have to drink ginger tea if you have fever you have you have heard from people and you just speak out right so in the same way design pattern should be impinged naturally into the developer when he sees a problem automatically that design pattern should sprung out right so that is the first point that design pattern should be learned naturally second 
most of the times most of the times developers have implemented almost all design patterns so basically when i'm teaching design pattern to many developers they say like hey shiv we have done this absolutely so the goal of a design pattern lecture is to make him aware that yes that is a design pattern and how he can improve on that right so there are two things you know developers have to understand first one almost all the design patterns you know they must have used it used it directly or indirectly so they have to just understand it and they have to just correlate it and second one you should try to make design pattern as a part of you it should be natural and it should not be superficial by reading the definitions or by hearting or mugging up right so let us say now you have bridge design pattern so what i am thinking in this course is to teach more in a practical way to to teach with more realistic example so for example let us say in this course if i want to teach you design, teach you bridge pattern this is the way i will go right so bridge pattern it decouples an abstraction from its implementation so let me try to uh, give you a short course of bridge pattern over here right so in bridge pattern first let us try to understand these two words abstraction and implementation because if you look at the definition of bridge pattern it says decouple abstraction from its implementation so if you don't understand these two words then understanding bridge pattern is difficult right so let us understand the word abstraction abstraction means um foreign entity when i say an entity means like customer supplier patient doctor anything in the real world what are the most important things which you want to see from the outside world so for example let us say in your real world you have a customer right so how does the end user see a customer an end user sees a customer where he says that yes a customer should have a name a customer should have probably an address a customer will have some kind of a bill amount and the customer has to pay the bill this is how a end user sees it right so then that becomes the abstraction so if you ask a end user hey like what do you think a customer is in real world he will say customer has a name address phone number he he has some bill amount and he has to pay the bill so and that abstraction normally you define it by using a interface because the best part about an interface is that it does not talk about the details you know for example when you say pay out here it does not talk about the technicality of how the payment is happening but it just talks about the abstraction abstract remember sometimes if you want to tell a long story write a big story somebody will tell you hey can you just tell abstract first abstraction right just you know what is necessary that defines that entity right so here is an abstraction i customer okay now uh, now you'd say that okay like so the customer so you'll go and you'll say okay let us go and define the implementation the back part of it you know so uh, i'll say okay let me go and create a customer so public class uh, let's say a customer so i'll just say a simple customer right and i will say implement this interface now this is where the implementation happens right so we go and we implement it and we actually write the code of it right so remember first in object oriented programming first the abstraction happens the thinking the thought process happens and then you go and you do the implementation right so now this is a simple customer and you say okay like this simple customer will pay using cash assume Uh, so I'll just write a console dot write line here. Says that he pays with cash, right? Great. So pays with cash. So after some times, new requirement comes in, and someone says that uh, we need to implement some new requirement where the customer can pay via card. So you go and you create one more class, right? And you go and you implement this i customer interface, and then you write the logic that yes, the customer will be paying through card. and then someone says okay like customer can pay through bank then you will again create one more class in you know, a customer bank now there is a problem in you know your abstraction is customer right it has a name it has a bill amount and so on actually somewhere the abstraction has gone wrong abstraction has gone wrong in the sense that you have mixed up the abstraction i will not say it is wrong but you have mixed up the abstraction actually there is you know you should have two things separate there is a customer and there is a payment mechanism right so the abstraction in terms of you know the thought process has been mixed up so now what is happening is that if something changes in the customer like the name or the bill amount the customer will change the customer codes will change 
second if you change again the 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 payment process again basically you know the the customer is changing right so that means now the customer is changing left and right which does not seems good right so here you know what you really have to do is that you have to separate your abstraction this is your abstraction the customer and the implementation behind is paying the bill paying the bill is a different process you have mixed it up right so what should really happen is you should have one more interface interface i bill payment right i bill pay and here you would say that okay pay the bill by using the customer data so this implementation over here implementation of this customer this this bill payment should not be in this it should be in this so you can see now this is your abstraction and this is our implementation we have separated them you know we have we have separated them right so now what will happen is if someone says okay uh, we want to go and change in the customer fine you go and you change in the customer someone says we want to change in the bill payment you will actually change in the bill payment so both of them are now different abstraction and implementation is different that's what the bridge pattern says bridge pattern says that separate the abstraction from the implementation so that both of them can vary independently when you add a new customer type you will add it here when you add a new bill payment type you will add it here so now this is how things will work so whenever we want to add a new customer type for example i want to add just first a customer with basic validation so i can just say i customer and there it is right so it just has name and the bill amount and then I can go and I can add the bill payment separate. For example, we have credit card bill payment, right? Credit card payment mechanism. So we'll just say I bill pay, right? And implement credit card bill payment, right? Or if you say cash payment, right? So, uh, right. So everything should be public out here for now. I'll just make it public. right so uh, let's say now you have cash payment cash payment I will implement again I bill so you can see now uh, you know the you know we have separated we have separated the implementation from the abstraction decouple the abstraction from its implementation so that both of them can vary independently now the client code becomes something like this so you will say here you know like i bill payment so let's say you can say i want to do a cash bill payment right and you have your customer separate right i customer c is equal to new just simple customer and then you will say pay dot so bill payment so b dot pay i'm sorry for the naming convention pass him customer right so in other words you can see now the uh, bill payment and the customer are separate right and definitely then you can spice up spice it up with dependency injection inversion of control uh, and so on and make it much better right so if you see here now bill payment is separate and customer is separate right so if someone says, okay, go and add a new customer, uh, you know, uh, who who will get discount, fine. So you'll say, okay, let me create a customer who is a discounted customer, no problem. Now, I'm only adding new customer types, you know, when the customer type is actually changing and not when the bill payment is changing. So you can see the decoupling right away out here, right? So if you see now, so these two are the changes which is related to abstraction and these two are new things you know which are related to implementation implementation abstraction they are now separate so that's what exactly bridge pattern does now by learning in such a way right now things become very easy so if you go now 
uh, to bridge pattern and if you try to read the wikipedia you will understand most of the things you can see here uh, bridge pattern is a design pattern that decouples an abstraction from its implementation we just saw it right and you can see bridge pattern uses encapsulation right rather than using inheritance so it uses more encapsulation because if you see out here now this in in this bill payment you have encapsulated the customer so rather than using inheritance it can use inheritance he says but rather than using inheritance we more focus on the uh, abstraction part right so that now you can see things are getting very clear right an abstraction and implementation should be defined and extended independently from each other so basically the abstraction you know here should be defined and extended means inherited so you can see here whenever you want to add a new abstraction you will inherit and add it whenever you add a new implementation you will inherit and add it right so only those individual units are changing separately not together right uh, so uh, that's that's what it is and then uh, if you go and if you read online things becomes clear right so basically what i feel is that when you are learning design pattern it should be natural it should be understood for example now i can tell you you will never ever forget bridge pattern if that is the case right if you really feel that yes you have understood bridge pattern properly please put down in the comment saying that yes this is the right way to learn it design pattern should be learned naturally seamlessly right and uh, that's what you know i'll be that's what the way i'll be training in this lectures out there so we are starting from 30th of april please go ahead and and subscribe uh, to our questpond learning thank you happy learning happy job hunting thank you